What's going on, comic community? This is my reviews of this week's comic books. So only the new ones, none of my old ones. Let's do this. Let's get right in. So, Walking Dead. This is going to go up from the bottom to the top, guys. So, number one will be whatever. So, Walking Dead was the bottom of my list. It wasn't bad. It was good. The ending of this book was extremely shocking, and I was like, holy shit. Um, I don't read enough Walking Dead to appreciate the book. So, other than that, uh, that's why it's at the bottom. Not because it's bad, but this is just where I'm putting it. I didn't know where to put it, just because I'm not super in love with The Walking Dead. I am with the show, and sometimes the books when I read them, but, you know... This, just the end was shocking. And I think you are most of you already know what happens. Um, but if you didn't, you'll have to check it out for yourself. Uh, there might be, there are going to be some spoilers in this video. So if you haven't read this week's books, I suggest you stop watching and you go read your books and then you come back and watch. Because I am going to talk about what happens in a lot of these books. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So up next is Superman. Now, the reason why this was, let's see, how many books am I reading? One, two, three, four, five. So, Walking Dead was number five. This is number four. Sorry, guys, a little unorganized. First time, next time won't be like this. But number four goes to Superman. Number two, uh, I actually really enjoyed this book. Uh, I don't read much Superman, but the book was good. Uh, I love the sun, and um, there's a lot of, like, it almost feels like a team-up book, because it's a lot of, you know, Clark and, and Jonathan, you know, his son John, uh, doing stuff together, and him teaching him how to become Superman and use his powers. It was super cool. I enjoy seeing, like, team-up books kind of like that. Uh, I love Tomasi and Gleason. The art's nice. It's good to look at. The story was good. It was easy to follow. Uh, there was a shocking twist at the end. Um, a new villain, which well, not new, but another you know a villain that should be being some sort of an antagonist. I don't know if that's the right word. I think it is. Yeah, an antagonist. I have no idea. I probably sound retarded, but there's gonna be a new villain next book. He's not new, but it's an old villain. To these people, he should be a thing because in this book, you know, Superman's son's just kind of learning how to use his powers correctly, and he's watching his he's watching Superman, you know, fight these this monster and saving people, and Clark's trying to teach him how to use his heat vision, and he can't really get it to work right, and. It's just, it's a good book. I, I was honestly surprised. I was going to rate it higher, but I don't know how I'm going to, I don't know. It's, the other books just kind of blew me away. So this is Superman's number four for me. It was a great book, though. I suggest you check it out if you haven't. And that's coming from somebody who's not the biggest Superman fan. I, I actually qu quite enjoyed it. Uh, and then number three for me, which is shocking, is Deadpool uh, versus Gambit. I read the first one last week. I actually really enjoyed it. The first one was great. It was really funny. Uh, that's kind of the reason I picked this book up, was it was going to probably be a little humorous with some action. Me and my girlfriend would read it and enjoy it, talk about it, have some laughs. Um, I really enjoyed the second issue. Not much to talk about. It's exactly... I'm sure a lot of people are going to hate it, but I liked it. For me not being a Marvel fan, this was really easy and great for me to get into and enjoy so that's why i'm giving it my third choice of this week was deadpool versus gambit now these books aren't every book that came out because i didn't get every book and i'm not going to i'm not going to get the ones that i'm not interested in reading that's just what it boils down to so my number two pick was uh justice league rebirth I was, I've been waiting for the Justice League, and this is primarily the main reason why I'm not picking up a lot of the solo issues anymore. Um, I like these characters. I like Aquaman and Wonder Woman and the Green Lanterns. 
you know, that's why I read DC. I, I like the characters. Do I like them enough to pick up and read every one of their solo issues? No. Do I like them as a team? Absolutely. So that's why I couldn't wait for the Rebirth to start for Justice League. Um, I would much rather read them as a team, working together, um, seeing them interact with each other, than read a lot of their solo issues. So it, this, this was really good. It, it's super action-packed from the get-go. Um, they address the new Superman. They address the old Superman. Um, there's a lot of heartache with Wonder Woman and, and a lot of heartache with the Justice League. It's, there's action. There's a there's a force. Soon as soon as you start reading, there's already something going on. You know, there's issues with the new Superman. He's addressing whether he should help out the Justice League or not, or do, can they handle this? And and they're all working as a team. And of course, you've got the new Green Lanterns, which show up later in the book. Uh, that there's some funny there's some funny banter between the Justice League, which I actually really enjoy. That's why I pick up the Justice League. It's awesome. The art's amazing. Um, I felt like there wasn't a ton of Batman. Uh, I mean, there was, but not really, which is fine because I enjoy, like I said, reading them as a team. Uh, the, the Green Lanterns and Superman pretty much come and save the day. Well, the Green Lant, let's say, the Green Lanterns show up, okay? And then Superman kind of comes and saves the day, really. Um... Yeah, that, that's how it kind of went down. The Green Lantern showed up, and then Superman saved the day. You're just going to have to read it for yourself. This was my number two pick of the week. It was awesome. Action-packed. I hope the second issue is just as good as this one. Uh, and there's some funny banter between Flash and, and Jessica Cruz, which uh, I, I hope Spider-Grandpa doesn't get jealous that, you know, Barry is... Uh, you know, hitting on his girl, because I know Spider-Grandpa really likes Jessica Cruz, and Simon doesn't really, I don't know, I don't know if they're, Simon didn't really take too kindly to everyone praising Jessica and not him, so I, I can't wait to see where, uh, you know, the first Justice League, I'm going to call it Justice League 1, because I ain't calling him Rebirth, because this is Rebirth, the one shot, I can't wait to see where the regular issue goes, because this was really good. I, I, I was sad that it was over, but I picked that up. That's your number two. My number one, of course, your boy, I'm wearing his hat. You know, see the, you know, and it was Batman. Now, I've said in other videos that I was on the fence about the Batman. Uh, I wasn't wowed with the first issue. I thought Detectives was better. I still think Detectives is really great. Next Wednesday, we'll find out where that keeps going. Um, I think King really brought it back. Oops. I'm dropping it on the mic again. Sorry, guys. I think King really brought it back with this issue. I was pleasantly surprised my favorite villain is in the beginning of this book. Unfortunately, like in every book he's in, he gets fucking smashed on real quick. But it was really awesome to see Grundy in the beginning of this book. Uh, it starts off with Grundy terrorizing... The Statue of Liberty, I think. I'm pretty sure it's the Statue of Liberty. Now I sound retarded. Again, about my favorite book. We're, we're going to open it up anyways because I want to talk about something. Yeah, it's the Statue of Liberty. I thought it was a different monument at first. But you can see... We're going to show, since this is my top number one, we're going to show a little bit what's going on. You can see he's, he's in there smashing away. He's fighting Gotham and Gotham Girl. And that's really cool seeing them uh, take on... Uh, a villain like Grundy, who is, you know, used to fighting the Justice League, Batman. He's seen all the other guys. Now he's seen somebody new. That was really cool to see. It was cool to see what Gotham and Gotham Girl are about. And it was really cool to see Batman's reaction towards them. Um, you know, you're used to seeing him, seeing Batman be very protective over the Robins and... You know, the Robins always want to go out and do their own thing and be good and fight crime. And Batman's always like, you know, Bruce is always like, no, you need to wait for me and, you know, just listen to what I say. Don't go running and doing your own shit. But it was it was nice seeing Batman kind of like, yeah, let them do their thing. You know, they he to me, he almost kind of seemed a little like, I don't know, like. 
he almost seemed like he felt a little he looked a little down in the book to me it felt because you know, there's a there's a part where him and Alfred are talking and he's just like well they've you know they've got superpowers they fly and they're pretty much superman they i mean they fly and they can see through anything and i i think he's like He's like, well, I don't have powers, and these people showed up. It's like, are they going to do my job for me? So it was weird seeing him kind of not really care. You know, he's just like, oh, they'll handle it. I'll just send them. Even though they're new, they're the new kids on the block. He wasn't, like, a super protective. He was just kind of like, yeah, go go do whatever. I'll help you out if you need to, but just do whatever. So it was weird seeing him like that and not being overprotective because I feel like Bruce is, like, an overprotective father. But it was really cool seeing them do that and just seeing Grundy. I mean, it's a good, it's a good fight. You know, it's, it's a fight for like three pages of the beginning. And then of course, you know, you know, during the three pages, Solomon Grundy saying his whole spiel about, you know, he was born on him, you know, born on a Monday. It starts off the first page. He starts doing his spiel as he's, he's fighting Gotham and Gotham girl. And then, he gets to the end, and it's, and then Batman says, and he's running away from them, and Batman says, and that was the end of Solomon Grundy, and he fucking smashes him into the ground, and Grundy is just out, and and that's when I was just like, yeah, like, that was like how a movie would start off for me, like if that's how a movie started off with action, and then Batman shows up, like, you know, he makes his entrance, smashes the enemy into the ground, and was like, and that's the end, like I'd be like, woo, let's get this party started, right? That's how I felt about this book. That's why I feel like King brought me back on board. You know, I don't like seeing Grunny getting shit on, but it was cool uh, to see him in a book at the beginning. And then we go out, to, you know, this we go out to find uh, Bruce is talking about Gotham and Gotham Girl out of the book, talking about how they're too new and they're. And then there's one part. Let me get to the page. I'm trying to find it, guys, real quick. Okay, we got a lot of cool of these full page, like heroic poses with, you know, Batman and the new people. So there's this page, and I don't know if they did this on purpose, because like I said in a previous video, I wasn't happy with the logo of the Suicide Squad only at the bottom of Batman. Why? And I was thinking, why don't the other books have these big logos of Suicide Squad on them? Okay, and I don't know if they did this on purpose. Now all, don't jump on me. All of the, the rebirths have. These big spreads, these massive spreads of the Suicide Squad. Okay, and here's here's an instance, another ad for the Suicide Squad Rebirth comic. It's just shitting Suicide Squad everywhere. I'd rather see that than a giant half-page Twix ad in my book. But I don't know if they did this on purpose because they knew Batman was going to be hugely received. So there's this panel where... Uh, Bruce and Gordon, Bruce is taking um, Gotham and Gotham Girl to meet Gordon, Jim Gordon, uh, to help him out, to have them lend a hand to him for, so they can meet up, because he says, they already know about everything anyways, they have like, fucking vision and they fly, so they already know everything, if they were here to cause trouble, they would have already done that, they already know who he is, he might as well trust them. So he takes them to meet Gordon, you know, the bat signal. And then he, when they're talking, he does his famous disappear. And Gotham and Gotham Girl with their vision, they can't see anything. They can't see where he went, even though they can see through everything. They go, well, I don't know where he went. That's impossible. And they're shocked. And Jim's just like, yeah, he, you know, he does that. You'll get used to it. He, he fucking does that. He'll call you when he wants to. And so they're talking and... Jim's like, so you guys are aliens or new or whatever. Do you know of any new monster or villain so he the line is and what about you two right here in this bottom panel what about you two you aware of anything that's coming to the city later that might be called a monster now i don't know if this is done on purpose so here's the next page ready you know i don't know if there's anything or what is it anything that comes to the city lately that might be called a monster i don't know if this is done on purpose but then the next is the full spread of the Suicide Squad statues. I don't know if that's, like, done on purpose. You know, like, Suicide Squad are monsters, you know, blah, 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 they're villains. 
I don't know if that's like a cheesy thing. I don't know if anybody else picked up on it. I don't know if I'm just reading too much into it, but uh, I thought that was weird. And it, once again, why is it only on Batman that there's a Suicide Squad? Uh, you know, a little logo. None of the other books have it, and they all have this centerfold. So, I mean, this book was awesome. Anybody who is on the border about Gotham and Gotham Girl, they got to see a really... This book was chalked with Gotham and Gotham Girl getting used to Gotham, Batman, Jim Gordon. And, you know, the end with Hugo Strange. So the next book should be incredible. And you can see after the, the centerfold, it just is like, they don't pick up the conversation on monsters. It's just Gotham and saying that we're here to help, Commissioner. You know, we're here to save the city. And this is the this is the same panel where like Batman disappears and they're like, wait, where'd he go? Like, but I don't know. I I don't know if that's just some clever thing that they did. And I'm reading too much in it. Check it out for yourself. This is the panel. It's right after the uh, Suicide Squad rebirth, talking about monsters, and then you flip the page to go to the next, and it's you know, the team of monsters. I guess you could say the team of the worst villains, the worst heroes. I guess you'd call them. But yeah, this is my number one, guys. This was this was awesome. King brought it back for me. Um, I was on the fence, like I said, about Batman last week or the week before. Uh, but this was fantastic. Uh, I can't wait for Detective Comics. I can't wait for Flash. I can't wait. This is great. I, this is the, the rebirth I've been waiting for. Um, I was really worried after Snyder left to All-Star Batman that King would not be able to hold the reins. I know he's had some great work on The Vision and other books, but I was really iffy. But I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this goes. You have some you have some Duke Thomas in here just for a I mean honestly just for a brief moment. Is he even in this panel? No. He's not. There's a scene where Bruce is dancing with a girl and the bat signals and you see Duke with Alfred, and they're walking. So Duke was at this shindig, too. He barely has any lines. He he doesn't do anything in this book. I, I'm I'm honestly, as, as some of you might know, I'm not a Duke Thomas fan. I, I was never on board with him. I feel like he's just a character they introduced to try to be, you know... To try to introduce some more diverse characters, and I feel like they did it wrong... Like, they just... I feel like he's just got thrown up into the Batman universe. He's not, like, somebody that Bruce found. I feel like Duke, like... I know... I hope I don't get a lot of hate for this, but I feel like Duke Thomas cock-blocked his way into the Batman universe. I feel like he just, like, slid into the Batman universe without really accomplishing much. I hated We Are Robins... Uh, it was awful. The best part was Damien telling them to shut the fuck up and you're not Robins. You're just a bunch of weirdos who think they're doing something, but you're just causing us more trouble. than uh, it, It's true. The, the book was awful. It, it was not good. The Robin Wars were the best part where all the other Robins got together. The real Robins, not the We Are Robins. And unfortunately, Duke Thomas is what came out of that, really. I know he's been in earlier books in the New 52, but... God damn, I, I really hope he's something better than he is because this is honestly he's just uh, and he's just following out this this page he's just one page of Duke and he barely has dialogue. He says this is it. This is the only panel he says two dialogue two things and then it's all Bruce and Alfred. So. I am definitely not on the Duke hype train. I apologize if I offended anybody who was. I'm just speaking my mind. I don't like him as a new whatever. I feel like it's just their way, comic book's way of just making diverse characters. The same with Black Wally West. There was uh, no need for that. There was no need to change Wally West. I don't mind a black character. I'm not saying that there doesn't need to be more diverse characters, but make a new character. I know that's what they're doing with Duke, 
but I feel like his story was just so bad. Like, he just kind of, like, he just, like, the, like Bruce didn't pick him. He sort of did. But, like, he just kind of, like, forced, jammed his, he jammed his way in. You know, he just fucking forced fed his way in like they force fed him into the batman universe and he's just kind of trickling around like those laps those those like last drops of urine that you have when you're shaking your dick off after you take a piss I, i'm sorry there's vulgar language but that's truly how i feel i i hope he does something more but so far i'm not impressed with what he is and i'm not impressed with we don't even know what he's going to be. I think he's going to be like the Yellow Ranger of Batman because he's... I mean, did you see those suits? I'm rambling. I'm done, guys. I've probably pissed off enough people. I hope you guys take care. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope I can do more. Thanks, everyone.